Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. This is episode 25, but I'm hoping it's more than 25% of the series, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. Today we're going to try and automate the microminer. The first things we're going to do is set up the steel gears, the steel small gears, and the heavy steel platings. There are many ways to make steel gears, and some of them look faster than others. And although it seems wrong, the fastest of these is actually to use the extruder. I have set up three machines, a compressor which will make steel heavy plates, an alloy smelter to make small gears, and an extruder to make gear gears. This system will be modularized for three different types of machines, which will each require a specific type of small gear, gear, and heavy plating. My plan is to extract metals out of small wooden chests in specific quantities. I'll be storage busing this chest to contain the specific types of items that are created by these machines. And when, for example, I don't have enough small steel gears, I will have steel be extracted from these wooden chests using level emitters. You may note this is a similar process to what I'm doing with this interface here. I have four different items being supplied, and I have level emitters to tell me when there's insufficient of, that, of the item they smelt into. When there is sufficient, these turn on so that the items are no longer extracted from the interface. Why didn't I use a bunch of interfaces here? Because interfaces are expensive. Steel has filled this interface and been extracted, always active, with a filter on steel into this small wooden chest. I've got a bunch of conduits that will be extracting from it on blue, and they'll each be level emitted. This storage bus will be partitioned on the three types of items I'll be making with this system for now. We'll filter on 16 small steel gears, 32 gears, and 128 steel heavy platings. Now we'll put three robot arms on the steel chests. The robotic arm and the extruder will supply exact four items, never three or five, it'll always insert four items at a time into the extruder. That way we won't, we won't get extra steel that isn't going to be processed clogging up the machine. That way we can use it for other gears. We'll do the same thing for the compressor, supply exact two, and just for good measure I'll supply exact one on the advanced alloy smelter for small gears. Let's try setting the insert on the extruder to blue. We'll see the steel enter, and it's currently being extruded. Lots and lots of steel is being put into the extruder, but it's only doing so on a filter of four items. Now, the alloy smelter is getting its small steel gears, and if we set this to blue, we'll see the same thing for the compressor get- Oh, boy, why is it doing that? It's doing that because to get heavy steel plating, you need to use steel plates and not steel ingots. Oh, no. All right, let's refilter this on two steel plates. And we'll move the interface from below to above. We'll filter the interface on steel plates and filter an item conduit extracting on steel plates and put a level emitter on it. Meanwhile, we'll realize another problem. Even though this redstone level emitter is telling this conduit not to extract steel anymore, this conduit is still extracting steel, and so it's still going into our alloy smelter for small steel gears. The obvious solution is to change the color of the channel. We have too many small steel gears, it's wrong. And our steel chest here is receiving two steel plates, thanks to the level emitter set to 128 steel heavy platings. Yay! Alright, now for project two, automatically constructing basic diesel generators. And now it's time for our passive mechanical crafting array. Interfaces will supply relevant items to these mechanical crafters, which will automatically craft them. Level emitters will turn on when sufficient numbers of the items have been crafted, and turn off these auto crafters. Note, you should put level emitters onto these crafters through blocks, because if you put the level emitter directly on the crafter, it will transmit signal not only through the crafter, but also to crafters on top of it, and they will also turn off. In order to mitigate this problem, you need to transmit the signal through one block into the next one. Items will be extracted from the auto crafters into an interface which will put them into the system. Where in the system will they go? Into a stack of partitions storing steel chests, of course. We'll supply tin wires and rubber sheets to this system here, and we'll see if it works out. Items are being created in the autocrafter and slowly put into the steel chest. For now, I'm going to set it to 64 and see what happens when it fills up. When we receive 64, this level emitter turned on and this autocraft turned off, as we can tell because no steel, no tin wires are entering the steel chest. For now, I'm going to set it to 124. That way, in case this auto crafter makes more than 124 tin cables before the final tin cables get extracted into the steel chest, the max it'll make is probably going to be 128, and so we'll only ever have two stacks in this steel chest. I've made a crafting unit, which will hopefully be big enough to handle the craft of one basic diesel generator. Ultimately, it isn't too complicated. 
I have most of these things already supplied except for the magnetic iron rods, so really all I need to do is craft electric motors, electric pistons, and LV machine holes and casings. Low levels of nesting is preferable when you're going to be using crafting cards, which is what I'll be doing. This section will be for my AE2 auto crafting machines, which is what I'm going to use in order to auto craft the LV machine casings in the assembler and also the magnetic iron rods, which I'll be doing in the electromagnetic polarizer. Here I have three assembling machines, one with a polarizer, one which will be for the machine holes, and one which will be for the machine casings. This one is full of polyethylene, although for LV machine holes we won't need it. I have here a pattern for magnetic iron rods and a pattern for the LV machine casing. Here's an integrated circuit on configuration 8, and here's a steel chest that I'm storage busing on LV machine casings and magnetic iron rods. I've also created a molecular assembler, which is Applied Energistics 2's method of crafting automatically in the system. It interacts with an interface placed adjacent to it to determine what pattern is being used and automatically craft based on that pattern. Let's place an interface down here with a molecular assembler on top, and we'll fill it with acceleration cards. Then we'll fill it with our patterns for electric motors, electric pistons, LV machine holes, and the basic diesel generator. If you just naively shift-click something like the basic diesel generator into Applied Energistics, it's just going to use the primitive circuit, so we should probably change it to have ORDIC substitutions. Or if you want to reduce the lag caused by Applied Energistics to recipe calculations, we'll just put in a refined circuit right now instead. And then we'll encode that pattern. And partition everything into the storage bus. The reason for this is that I believe Applied Energistics needs a place to put things temporarily while they're being processed in a crafting setup. In any case, I think we can now make a basic diesel generator. Let's find out if it works. We'll watch the crafting status and see what happens. I did the one thing you are not supposed to do. I forgot to set allow input on output side for these GT machines, and I had to break all these interfaces and replace them. Alright, now let's try it. Yes, it looks like some of the things are crafting. We'll see if it goes through all of them success. Oh, wait, need to set these to auto output, and we will find out if they work. And I also need to power them. Oh, there you go, diesel generator's done. Let's make another one and watch it from the crafting status menu. Oh, so fast, that's how I like it. Because currently I don't feel like passive conductive iron energy conduits, I'm also going to put these into this assembler, also because I don't feel like making a second assembler. Let's take this pattern and put it into the assembler. I filtered this interface on all of these types of items, and there's a crafting card as well, so that the conductive iron energy conduit will be automatically crafted. We'll petition the storage bus on conductive iron thrusters, and set this to turn off at 16 conductive iron thrusters, so that this will start crafting. Next up, the basic mining laser and then set basic mining lasers to 32, with an extract always active so that they go into the interface and get stuck in this steel chest. For the sensor, I'm going to have to supply brass rods and quartzite without crafting them because currently I can't get either. However, I'll have access to quartzite as soon as the tier 3 microminer, and I'll have access to brass as soon as I can get zinc from sphalerite, which you now get from the tier 2 microminer. I'll partition this storage bus for quartzite and shove it in as an extra. And then I'm taking all these brass rods in my inventory and shoving them into this drawer so that they'll start being used to craft sensors. I'll keep 32 of those as well. Although I'm definitely going to need a lot more brass rods and quartzite. Or I might not. I mean, you don't need that many microminers in the early game. And we'll keep in stock 16 basic microminer guidance systems. And be sad because you don't have any more quartzite. But it's okay if you got more quartzite dust here. And then because field generators require refined circuits, which you already have supplied in this interface, we can just swing shoving field generators onto this interface as well. We'll keep 32 of those in stock. Once we put these eight basic diesel generators in this interface with a crafting card, crafting should start automatically, and we'll be able to look at it in this crafting monitor. Looks like it's going wonderfully, extremely fast, and I adore it. However, it doesn't seem to have any idea what to do with these steel rods, and now I'm confused. When I partitioned this storage bus for steel rods, it dumped the excess steel rods in here. And I'm hoping it'll take these out first. I might just add an extra piece of priority so it takes out the steel rods first. And now, without further ado, our first steel-plated microminer. We did it, boys. 25 episodes in, and we have it. Our first microminer, which will get us such amazing things as rutile, salt, dilithium, galena, uraninite, redst- I don't know. Cool stuff. Moon turf. I'm having a slight cough. If I die, Carolyn takes over in my place. 
Let's make sure we supply eight of these to our system at all times. It's done. The deed is done. In the next episode, we're going to start sending these boys out. We need to automate Quantum Flux. Luckily, we already have rocket fuel. Quantum Flux is going to take a couple things, particularly pulsating crystals, which are going to be a reason that we start smelting uraninite. We'll use salt ore, which will eventually make us chlorine, to test a system for automatically sending out microminers. One warning, I'm going to be using Integrated Dynamics for that, which is a mod I added to this pack. Why would I do something so horrible? Because I don't want to make a bunch of AND and OR gates in world. But Integrated Dynamics will allow me to do complex sets of AND and OR, which you could theoretically do using just redstone, I promise. But for now, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed the last 25 episodes of Omnifactory, and God bless you all.